I'm hugely respectful of the of the art of performance of the you know of the actor's profession how difficult it is and how difficult it is to be even just to be consistent and consistently portray the character uh, on a day-to-day basis particularly over a long shoot you know so yeah like that's all I like an actor to know is that I'm watching everything absolutely everything because there's value in everything even if you don't instantly go well that's what I thought that could that may not be what my ins my initial reaction was about that character because because you have to map everything that's happening because they're the things that are going to be useful for you to you way down the line when actually the story has changed a lot for lots of different reasons you know it could be too long or it just maybe isn't moving fast enough maybe isn't connecting to people in the right way so that's when you kind of go back and remember all of those beats that you didn't use the first time um so yeah it's a <clears throat> you know it's just it's just a question of being of having a good memory watching everything and particularly listening to everything and yeah it's quite often and it happens with younger actors a lot you know once they're once they've done their setups and the camera reverses they're they're more relaxed and they're actually you know they don't stop developing the performance just because the camera's not on them they're still acting against another you know character and um and quite often that's going to get better and better and better sometimes not often but sometimes we'll take the sound of that delivery and replace your words your on-screen version of that with the 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 more emphatic or believable version that you've done off screen and tweak it in such a way that we're just retiming the words and it'll play and you know it's just a it, it's being open to the kind of alchemy of sound and vision what's that character doing you know what's the face telling me about what's going on internally what's the voice telling me uh, and finding ways in which we can kind of bring those two things together i think i'm just looking for the oddness in many ways of human life the unpredictability the the fact that you know you know that they're not performing something that it isn't a thing that is you know showing off how well written something is it actually just feels real and engaging and like i've had like i am a, as a viewer are lucky enough to be sitting in this room with these people so i suppose you know the only way i've found that that actually that to get to that place is by shooting the coverage i'm i'm hugely um not cynical but i don't quite trust the instinct of doing of of like what they call wonners i think one needs to be extremely careful about that particularly with first time filmmakers i'm looking for a variation and range you know when i start looking through rushes if it's being well directed you can see development you can see a thought line that things are being worked on beats are happening i mean it's dangerous if you watch take one and then watch the last take and there's no real difference between them like that doesn't show growth in the scene there should have been a uh, a kind of development there so that that that's what i'm looking for really uh, and i'm that's what i'm reacting to you know that's not to say further down the line when you have an assembly you go you know what this scene doesn't mean what originally supposed mean what it was originally supposed to mean now means something different we have to react to that so i don't like to be prescriptive what am i looking for in an actor all i'm looking for in in a set of rushes is development and a kind of play something at play where you're going yeah there's something going on there for me to take my lead from there are times when yeah continuity errors will be really noticeable and you look there's no way around that you just got to fix them but it but in many ways i think um it's less an issue these days i mean uh, like for example i go back to room i i couldn't imagine uh that lenny could have shot that film if he was worried about continuity particularly with a young actor like jake why would you do that it's hard enough like your your time on set is limited because of the the age of the actor anyway 
But if you then were stopping every take because the cup wasn't in the right place, it'd be, you know, you get nothing done. There are millions of continuity errors that flip, that go past me because I'm too locked into, I'm too concentrated on how this whole thing feels and plays, you know. And then quite often on your third or fourth pass, something will pop up and you go, oh yeah, I really just wasn't looking for that. And then you'll find a way to fix it. But I, I would, you know, personally speaking, you know, I really don't think it's, it's something that uh, people are, are looking for. The pace of editing changes anyway, you know, and you do so, you play so much with time and scenes that it's just kind of impossible that, you know, like for, again, there's a scene in um, Normal People, I think it's episode four, and it's just a back and forth between two characters and one is preparing coffee for the other. And we took several lines out of that. So the whole process of preparing coffee is like literally happens <laughs> in four or five seconds. But no one's commented on it and no one has a problem with that. And they're not going, oh, the coffee making isn't real. They're just in the scene, you know? And, and again, they're the things you gotta fix and that's fine to fix, you know? You try not to be slavishly uh, tied to either the source material, whether it's a book or, you know, whatever, or, or the script, because that's there as a kind of, you know, instruction manual in many ways to get people onto a set to start the work. But it's no real use to you once it's been shot and once it has been performed, because shooting something changes it, performing something changes it. And so really you have to keep your eyes wide open to what that is on the screen, to what's happening in front of you. One tends to cut drama less so on script or on lines, more so on connection or lack of connection between characters. And that connection is through eye contact. Are they looking at each other or are they not looking at each other? And if they're not looking at each other, why aren't they looking at each other? And so and, and there's so much in that, commun that communication um, of, of eye contact that is non-verbal. It's so loaded. There's been a m many, many times where actually I've just quietly just cut away lines and let, let the look do, do all the work. Um, and I don't mean, I'm not encouraging actors to stare at each other that way, but it's, you know, there's so much in when somebody chooses to look at someone and when they don't, um, that it, it's a wonderful thing to play with in the edit suite, you know? Um, and again, that crosses all forms of drama. You know, it's, it's, it's not just love stories. It's across the board. Um, and it's the most subtle thing, but it's the thing I think people, audiences connect to, you know? It's not necessarily the silence of the lambs where the actors are literally looking at you down the barrel of the lens. It's that connection that you're creating between two characters, you know? What, what are they saying to each other through that eye contact? And, and, and what aren't they saying to each other? Words are very loaded things, um, but they only really mean something, you know, they mean a lot more when you see what they're doing to another person. And again, so when you're editing a scene that's, you know, dialogue heavy, it's rarely that interest, it's rare that it's that interesting to stay on the deliverer of the dialogue. It's usually far more interesting to see what it's doing to the other person within reason. Um, but they're the kind of rhythms that you're cutting at, not th I've, that person's come to the end of the sentence, this person's now beginning to speak. It's what, it, what are those words doing? And, and usually that's forcing you to edit at a different kind of rhythm than the, than the language is happening. And then all of a sudden things start to feel natural because you're working at the wavelength at which an audience are engaged with this. You're going, yeah, you're showing them what they want to see or that they feel that they want to see. And the dialogue is happening and it's doing things and it's working in interesting ways. So, yeah, I mean, again, it's all about, um, again, it's, it's tricky. You don't want to overload 
uh, actors' sensibilities in terms of them thinking about this. But I suppose it's always useful for them to know that, you know, dialogue does not need to be necessarily over-dramatized or oversold for it to work in the way that it needs to work, you know, for the effect that it needs to have on people. Because the photography uh, and the editing and the sound of the scene will actually raise it to a different level uh, as well. You know, particularly with young actors and new actors, there's always a second guessing going on between what do I think this character should be versus what do I think the director wants this character to be um, or the producer or whoever. And I suppose, you know, again, it's about building time into um, the day that you, there's enough time given to kind of develop a performance. But I always think it's a healthier place to start whereby the actors may be doing a little bit of their own running and then the director will come in and subtly change it. You can't, the actors aren't robots. You can't, they don't, there's not a joystick attached to them where you can just reprogram them and they'll do another take totally differently. It's about just guidance, I suppose. And again, you can see that in rushes and you can see development and a kind of mutual back and forth as opposed to, you know, it doesn't always quite work if it's like, well, we're going to do two takes this way and then two takes angrier and then two takes blanker and then we'll be covered. It doesn't work that way. It has to be a constant evolution through the takes. And again, this is me talking about direction more than editing. But my point is, is that that through line, that way of working quite often results in material and rushes that are performance rich that have enough subtlety and variation that lets you cut and then further down the line recut a scene in a different way and it still feels authentic you know um i would always say that like for actors not to be afraid to to bring their own interpretation sometimes it may be more correct than what the director has in their mind because there are sometimes there are some directors and they maybe come from a different background maybe everything they've done has been commercials or music videos and they're primarily visual people which is the part of the job obviously but in some sometimes the performance can get in the way of this visual execution that they have you know and i actually think that should always be secondary to a degree it should look beautiful it should look amazing but actually if what's going on on screen isn't quite clicking that's all redundant and as an editor you're not going to use that material because it just doesn't play quite often there will be a look an actor gives before a director calls action that is more real and more useful and more poignant than anything that happens in that scene. And it, it's probably because it's more real and it's less loaded in terms of what an actor is giving to it. And I, I mean, it's a very delicate skill that, like knowing just what freak, and again, it should always be aided and embedded by a director, but knowing just what frequency you can, you need to kind of operate at that's giving your character enough believability but also conscious of where they are in the story at any given time again go back to room we did it a couple of times where brie was just thinking about the scene before it started and you could you know great camera operators great dps know this they'll hone in and they'll they'll just go mm, that's an interesting shot i'm just going to stay there and the amount of times we've used that kind of footage is extraordinary and quite often we'll use that footage in such a way that we're looking at you we're looking at you we can tell there's something going on inside and we're hearing the dialogue from the scene that's about to start pre-lap under and the the kind of alchemy between those two things is 10 times more powerful than if we just started with you a single shot you talking there so it's it's you know uh, and again, separate to that, on Room, Lenny shot a lot of material of Brie 
in different emotional states because we there was the time when Jake wasn't available to do these things at the end of the day. And we used so much of that footage, so much. So it wasn't scripted. It wasn't, um, you know, we didn't even know where we were going to use it. But again, it was her in character, her in different emotional states. And I'm sure what it did for her is it helped her even more to understand that character, to feel her trapped in this place and her own quiet moments where Jake would have been asleep or whatever. Um, uh, and it, it all kind of added to the melting pot of making the experience feel more real. Like in Normal People, there's one with Marianne of just her standing, looking out over the landscape. And it wasn't scripted, it was just grabbed on the day. Uh, yeah, it does tells you more about where she's at emotionally and you know intellectually at that point in her life than any scripted scene ever would. Um, so it, it's more about you know um, just being in the character at all times and being ready to kind of imp that's a great kind of improvisation, one that's like you know nonverbal. It's just kind of improvised in the moment. They're in costume. They're in an interesting spot, you know, and it's, it's great when actors and directors get to kind of come up with these setups because we use them all the time, all the time.